Hello everyone, welcome to Study Pharma. In this lesson, I'm going to explain you alkaloids, their classification, and study some of the chemical structures. So what are alkaloids? They are secondary metabolites not required for normal growth and development. They are organic and basic. From the term itself, you can understand alkali means basic. The presence of at least one nitrogen atom is a general chemical feature of alkaloids. And the nitrogen atom is present inside or outside of the heterocyclic ring system. Example for nitrogen atom inside the heterocyclic ring is pyrrole, indole, piperidin. For nitrogen atom outside the heterocyclic ring, the example is ephedrine colchicine. The term alkaloid was first coined by pharmacist Meissner in 1890. Alkaloids are widely used in medicines, poultices, poisons, and cosmetics. Alkaloids are produced by a large variety of organisms including bacteria, fungi, plants, and animals. One quarter of higher plants are estimated to contain alkaloids. And the first individual alkaloid, the morphin, was isolated in 1804 from opium poppy. Now let us move on to the classification of alkaloids. They are mainly classified into four types, taxonomical, biosynthetic, pharmacological and chemical classification. First one, the taxonomical classification. It is based on their distribution on various family. For example, Solanaceae, Papillionaceae, Apocynaceae. The second one is biosynthetic classification. This classification is based on the precursor from which the alkaloid can be synthesized biosynthetically. So this classification is based on the biosynthetic precursors from which the alkaloids originate. For example, the tryptophan derived alkaloids Histidine-derived alkaloids, tyrosine-derived alkaloids. The essential amino acid tryptophan is the precursor of thousands of alkaloids. Next, the pharmacological classification. This classification depends upon the physiological response like seen as stimulant, seen as depressant, antimalarial, antihypertensive, analgesic, anti-cancer, and anti-diabetic actions. If we look at the examples, caffeine is a senus stimulant, datura is a senus depressant, cinchona is anti-malaria, rovolfia anti-hypertensive, analgesic morphine, anti-diabetic, Winka. The fourth classification is the chemical classification, which is based on the fundamental ring structure present in alkaloids. And these are subdivided into three types of alkaloids, which are the true alkaloid, protoalkaloid, and the pseudoalkaloid. First, let us discuss the true alkaloid. These are derived from amino acid and the nitrogen atom is present inside the heterocyclic ring. These alkaloids are highly reactive with biological activity. Even in lower doses, they are highly reactive. All of the true alkaloids have bitter taste and appear as white solid substance with exception of nicotine. Nicotine is a brown liquid. Examples of true alkaloids are morphine, atropine, nicotine, cocaine, and many others. 
Next, protoalkaloids. This one is also derived from amino acid, but the nitrogen atom is present outside the ring system, unlike the true alkaloid, which has the nitrogen atom inside the ring system. Examples of protoalkaloids are ephedrine, mescaline, yohimbin, and many others. Next, the acetoalkaloid. These alkaloids, their basic carbon skeleton are not derived from amino acids, but they are derived from the precursor of amino acid. The true alkaloid and the protoalkaloid were derived from amino acid itself, but the pseudoalkaloid is derived from the precursor of amino acid. Examples are steroidal alkaloids, purine alkaloids like caffeine, theobromine, etc. Next step on, we're going to study some of the chemical structures of types of alkaloids. So we are going to just study some of the basic ring structures of some types of alkaloids. Among that, the first one is pyrrolidin. As you can see from this structure, it is a five-membered ring which contains four carbon atoms. That is like in the four corners and in the middle there is the nitrogen atom. So that's the basic ring structure of pyrrolidin. The second structure that we're going to look at is pyridin, which is nothing but a benzene ring in which one CH group is replaced by a nitrogen atom. The third structure is piperidin, which is a six-membered ring that also has a nitrogen atom. So that's piperidin. Next, the fourth structure is tropane. By looking at the structure, it may find that it is difficult, but it is not so, as it is a fusion of piperidin and pyrrolidin ring. So tropane is a bicyclic amine that has pyrrolidin and piperidin ring, which we have already studied. Now let's take a look at the fifth structure, quinoline. Now this is also a very simple structure. It is a double ring composed of benzene ring and pyridin ring fused at two adjacent carbon atom. So the benzene ring and the pyridin ring, which we have already seen, and number two. Those both are just fused at two adjacent carbon atoms. So that is quinoline, and it's a benzopyridin. Since benzene ring and pyridin ring are fused, it's called a benzopyridin. Now the sixth structure, isoquinoline. It is nothing but the isomer of quinoline. The only difference is that the nitrogen atom is in a slightly different position than quinoline, since the isomer of quinoline. And it is also a benzopyridin, since it is composed of benzene ring and a pyridine ring. Now that was simple. Now let's move on to the next structure, the seventh one which would be quinolizidin or norlupinine. Different names for the same structure. So let's look at the structure now. It's nothing but two six-membered rings fused together with a nitrogen atom in between them. They share a common nitrogen atom. The, so that is quinolizidin or norlupinine. Now let's move on to the next structure which is indole. It is a bicyclic structure which consists of a six-membered benzene ring fused to a five-membered nitrogen-containing pyrrol ring. So indole is a combination of benzene and a pyrrol ring. So it is known as benzopyrrol also. So indole or benzopyrrol. Now let's move on to the next structure, imidazole. It is a five-membered ring with three carbons and two nitrogen. It's also pretty much simple. 
Now the last structure we're going to discuss in this lesson is pyrrolizidin, which is a bicyclic ring fused with two also fused pyrrolidin rings which share a common nitrogen atom. So it is a bicyclic structure and it's a really simple structure as we've already learned the pyrrolidin rings previously. So two pyrrolidin rings share a common nitrogen atom that makes it pyrrolizidin so these were some of the chemical structures of types of alkaloids now let us take a look at some of the examples of these types first pyrrolidin example hygrin stachydrin pyridin example ricinin aricolin third one Piperidin, example, lobeline, conine. Tropane, atropine, cocaine. Quinoline, quinine, quinidin. Next, isoquinoline, example, morphine, amatin. Quinolizidin, or norlupinine, example, spartine, lupinine. Indole or benzopyrrole, ergotamine, ergometrin, reserpine, imidazole, pilocarpine, pylosin, pyrolizidin, senesifilin, senesionin. That's all for the examples. Now let's take a look at some of the basic properties of all alkaloids. As we've already learned, the word alkali means basic. So all of the alkaloids are basic in nature and they have a ring structure. They are colorless crystalline solids with sharp melting point. Most alkaloids are chiral molecules. The word chiral. Chiral means you must have already heard in chemistry that it's four different groups. It's a carbon atom with four different groups. So the alkaloids here are chiral molecules, which means they have non-superimpossible mirror images. Chiral means mirror images of each other, like right hand and left hand. That is non-superimpossible. Most alkaloids are crystalline solids. Few are amorphous solids, for example, amatin. Some are liquids that are either volatile or non-volatile. Volatile example, nicotine. Non-volatile example, pilocarpin. Generally, the free bases of alkaloids are soluble in organic solvents and insoluble in water. And the vast majority of alkaloids are colorless. But a few are colored, for example, Colchicine and berberine are yellow. Canadine is orange. Now let's move on to the last part, which is the chemical tests for alkaloids. There are four major tests. Dragon Drops test, Mayer's test, Wagner's and Hager's test. First, Dragon Drops test. So all of these tests are used to determine whether the compound is an alkaloid. In Dragondorf's test, first you take the drug solution and add Dragondorf's reagent, which is potassium bismuth iodide. It results in the formation of orange-red color, which indicates the presence of alkaloid. Next, the Mayer's test. To the drug solution, add few drops of Mayer's reagent, that is potassium mercury iodide which gives a cream-colored precipitate. The third test, Wagner's test. To the drug solution, add few drops of Wagner's reagent, which is iodine in potassium iodide solution. This results in a reddish-brown precipitate, which indicates the presence of alkaloids. And the last test, Hager's test. Here, to the drug solution, add few drops of Hager's reagent, 
that is saturated solution of picric acid. This results in the formation of yellow crystalline precipitate. If you would like more such videos, give it a thumbs up and do comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe.